What's going on YouTube? Cheers now right here. So in today's video I'm going to show you how to downgrade your iPhone, iPad or iPod Touch to a jailbreakable firmware after it's been unsigned using SHSH blobs. So in order to do this we're going to use Future Restore and the previously saved SHSH2 blobs but it's very important to keep in mind that this procedure has some requirements so before we even start this is not going to work if you're already on iOS 12.2 12.1.3, 12.1.4, or if you're watching this in the future, if you're running any firmware that is new and is not jailbroken currently, then this procedure will not work. So you have to be on a jailbroken firmware in order to do this. Another important thing is that at the moment I'm making this video, there is a bug that makes the iPhone 8, 8 Plus, 10, 10s Max, 10R, and 10S to not be able to restore with this method. Do not try it on these devices because it will bootloop the device and it will not work. So you should keep that in mind. Now another important thing you should keep in mind is that you have to make sure that the SEP and basement are compatible because you're going to need the latest version of iOS in combination with the version that you want to restore. For that there is this table in here which contains some of the versions which are compatible with which devices but this is not often updated. However the information can be found on the Reddit gel break if you're searching, so you should keep that in mind before proceeding. Now this is a little bit outdated, the iOS 12.2 SEP is also compatible with the iOS 12.1.2 and 12.1.1 and so on, but on the iPhone 8, 8 Plus, 10, 10s Max and so on, it's not, so do not restore those. Another thing you need to keep in mind is that you can only do this if you have the blobs previously saved, for example, you want to restore to iOS 12.1.2 or 12.1.1, you need to have the blobs already saved and you can only save the blobs when the version is signed. Right now it's not, so you would not be able to save it right now, you would only be able to save it for 12.2. Another important thing is that you cannot use my blobs or somebody else's blobs, each blob is for a specific device, so do not try to use somebody else's blobs. If you didn't save yours at the time when these were signed, do not try this. And one last thing that you need to know before proceeding is that you have to have the generator from the blob actually set into the device. However, if you already set the nones using Uncover or Electrum or you use the default one from Uncover and you have a blob for that, then you would be able to restore it with no problem. Just put it in recovery mode. So that's basically all the requirements for this video. You should keep this in mind and let's proceed. So the first thing we need is to go ahead here on IPSW.me and get the IPSW for the version we want to restore. I'm going to restore an iPod Touch 6th generation in here. So as you can see, iOS 12 12.1.1 is not signed, but I want to restore to it, and I will be able to because I already run iOS 12.1.1, so I'm jailbroken and I can set the nonce. So in this case I would be able to downgrade, but before we do that we have to find out which blobs we have for which version. In order to do this you need to open iTunes and get your ACID, so we're going to press two times in here and get the ACID. And that would be it. If your device is not booting, it's in a boot loop, put it in recovery mode and you would be able to get the ACID from there. If you saved your blobs previously with TSS Saver, you can check them out with this in here. Paste the ACID here on recover link and get your blobs. And you would be able to see which blobs you have saved before and in my case it's a pretty long list. So I have saved a lot of them from 2017 to 2019. I'm going to use 12.1.1 in here. Now if you open the blob folder, you're going to see a no app nonce folder which you're going to have to go into and download the blobs from there. Now in my case, the blobs that are generated have a specific nonce, so I'm going to have to get them for that specific nonce. So as you can see, I have multiple choices in here, I'm going to get all of them, but this is the uh, nonce that is being generated by my device at this moment. So I'm going to get this one in here and I'm going to have it on desktop. Now the next thing you need to get after you got the blob and you know which version you got it for, because as you can see in here it says 12.1.1 and this build number, you're going to have to get that specific IPSW. So 12.1.1 with that build number, I press download and I get it. I already have it so I don't need to download it again. Now the next thing you need is to go back in here on your device and get the latest available IPSW. But as I said, you must make sure that the latest available one has a SEP and a basement compatible. In this case, the iOS 12.1.1 does support the SEP from 12.2, but you should keep in mind that there is a bug currently called the Fortnite bug, which means that in two weeks from the restore, SEP will basically crash and it wouldn't let you unlock your device, it would reboot your device if you set the passcode or touch ID. So right now we do not have a fix for this bug, and if there will be a fix for this bug, I'm going to make a new video on the channel, but right now you should keep in mind that if you do this, you should not set a passcode 
or Touch ID on your device. Otherwise, in two weeks, it will stop working. So that's very important. Now, I'm going to go ahead and here, 12.2 is the latest, and I know that it's compatible, at least it works. So I'm going to press download in here, and you're going to have to get the link for it. So I'm going to press cancel, get the link from here, because we do not need the entire IPSW. And I'm going to have to go here to extract.me. Press URL in here and paste the link in here and you would be good to go. Press open and you would be able to open the IPSW file to only extract what you need. Now, it's very important to know which kind of device you're going to restore. If you're restoring an iPhone, you're going to need the baseband as well. And it's important to consult the community or this table if they are updated to know which baseband is compatible. You have in here the SEP and the baseband. Now, as I said, make sure that this is updated because it's not uncommon for an IPSW to contain multiple SEPs and multiple basebands for various devices. Now, after you know which one you need, you're going to have to get the SEP, I'm going to press in here, make sure it's the EM4P and not the PList file. And then of course you need to get the uh, basement if you have one. In my case, it's an iPod. iPods do not have it. The same thing applies for the Wi-Fi iPads that do not have a SIM card. The rule is like this. If it has a SIM card, it has a basement, so you have to get the basement too. If it doesn't, then you don't need one. And the next thing is the build manifest in here. You get the build manifest file and that's basically what you need from the latest available version. Now, you should keep in mind that you can get this from any version that is signed. For example, if 12.1.4 was signed with 12.2, you could have gotten it from 12.1.4 rather than 12.2. But you must make sure that it is compatible with the version you're trying to restore too. Now, the next thing you need to do is to basically get the future restore binary, which is going to be available in the description down below. Below, make a new folder called downgrade and put everything in here. I have the future restore, the build manifest, the blob for my device, the uh, IPSW and the SEP. Everything is in one place, so now we just have to configure the device. Now, as I said, if your device is already in a boot loop, which means that it's not powering on, it shows the Apple logo and it doesn't power on, then you can try this because Uncover might have set the um, nonce for you, but if you didn't set it before, then it's very likely this is not going to work. If you can power on your device, or if you know that you have set the uh, nonce before in the uh, field that Uncover has or Electra has, then you should be good to go. If your device powers on, do what I'm doing next. All right, so where do you get the generator that you have to set from your blob in order to be able to do the downgrade? Well, in your blob file that you have, you have to open it with a text editor of sorts, or you can use Xcode if you're on a Mac, and of course you need to find a generator inside. You have to scroll a little bit in here, and there will be a key called generator, like this one in here, and you're interested in the string, which in my case is 0x and 16 ones. In your case, it might be something else. What you need to copy onto the device on the um, nonce field from Uncover or Electra is exactly this value in here. Here, which as I said in your case it might be different. In my case it happens to be hex 1111161s and I have to put that on Uncover in order for Uncover or Electra to set it into the NVRAM so that the downgrade can be done with this particular blob in here. So let's move on to the device and configure it. So I'm on the device in here and we have to configure the device before downgrading or before restoring to that unsigned version because we have to set the generator in the NVRAM. Now in order to do that you need either a nonce setter or a jailbreak that has that option. Uncover has the option, Electra has the option, Double Helix has the option, Meridian I think has the option, and there are nonce setters for iOS 11, for iOS 12, and the procedure is actually quite similar. But what you have to do is to basically set the nonce into the memory. Now I'm going to use Uncover for this, and um, in order to do that you have to be in the non-jailbroken mode, you go to settings in here on Uncover, make sure that overwrite boot nonce is actually toggled on, otherwise this will not work, and then scroll all the way down to boot nonce in here. It gives you an example, hex and 16 ones, and that's exactly what I have to write in here, but you must be careful because in your case the generator might be different, so you have to set the generator from the blob file that we discussed earlier. Now we press return in here and there we go we can go back to jailbreak and press jailbreak in here and now when we jailbreak it will set automatically that generator in the memory all right so now that the nonce is actually set into the memory we can connect the device to the computer and we can start the actual downgrade or upgrade or whatever process so in order to do that we need to open the terminal and we need to navigate into the um, downgrade folder that we created earlier and I'm going to write CD and get the uh, the folder in here, press on the icon and drag it in the terminal. 
and you are now in there. So you have in here the future restore binary, so dot slash future restore, and then you have to write dash T and you have to paste the blob file. So you take the blob file from there, drop it in here, leave a space and the next command is dash S for the sep. So I'm going to get the sep file from here, sep firmer and put it in here. If you have an iPhone or an iPad that has a SIM card, you're going to have to write dash B and drop the basement file in here. If you have an iPod touch or you have an iPad with only Wi-Fi and no SIM card, instead of that, you're going to have to write dash dash no dash basement as it is my case in here because this one is an iPod touch. And then of course you're going to have to write dash P and drop the manifest file, which is this one in here, build manifest and then leave a space and write dash M and put again the manifest file, which is again this one in here, leave another space and drop the IPSW. So you get the IPSW from here, in my case, iPod touch, whatever. And that's the entire command pretty long and you have to be very, very careful. If you don't specify the baseband or if you specify no baseband on a device that does have a baseband, does have a SIM card, the restore will fail. So you should be very, very careful. There is actually a written guide that is available in here on Google Docs. I'm going to link it down below since it's very, very good and very detailed in here on anything you have to do and how to create the actual parameters for the future restore, but you should also read the warnings and I repeat them. The iPhone 8 and 8 Plus do not work with this method for the moment. The 812 devices also do not work because it's going to break the uh, Face ID. And currently, if you're using the uh, iOS 12.2 SEP, you should not set a passcode or Touch ID because otherwise you're going to face the Fortnite bug, which means that you're going to have to restore again in two weeks. Otherwise, the device will not work properly. Once that is fixed, I'm going to update the comment section and the description of this video to let you know if the Fortnite bug is fixed. However, right now, you should keep that in mind. Do not set the passcode or Touch ID if you're doing this right now, unless you see in the description or in the comments that the bug has been fixed. Now we can press enter and with the device connected, we can start doing whatever we need. So as you can see, it says in here that uh, it's going to continue in a few minutes. It's going to tell us that we did not select a baseband, which is important, but in our case, it's not since we do not have one on an iPod. It's going to enter the recovery mode. It did so successfully. And as you can see, it got the app nonce from the device successfully. So in this case, if you see extracting file system from IPSW, then it means that the blob was successful, the connection with the device was successful and stuff like that. So if you see this in here, you did the uncover part or the Electra part or whatever, the generator part successfully and your commands for the future restore are very likely correct. You're going to have to wait for the file system to be extracted. And now, as you can see, it's going to send IBEG. Your screen is going to be briefly green. In my case, it is lime green. And of course, now it shows the Apple logo. It's not going to stay on green for too long. So you should keep that in mind. And it's going to start sending whatever in here. Now, at this point, the entire process has started and the device is basically trying to restore, which is normal. It's going to take some time. It can take even 10 minutes. So I'm going to be right back once it's done. All right, so a few minutes after that, as you can see in here, done, cleaning up, restore finished, restoring succeeded. So in my case, the restore was complete and I managed to restore the iOS 12.1.1, which is no longer signed for months now, even though Apple no longer signs it because I have the blob. So as you can see in here, let me prove the fact that I have 12.1.1. If you navigate through the log, you can see that the uh, version product version here is 12.1.1 with the build number 16C50, which is basically the iOS 12.1.1 and the restore was successful. I'm going to move to the device now and show you exactly that I have 12.1.1 on the device, but that's basically the tutorial. That's basically what you have to have in here, and those are the commands. Remember, you can check out the uh, tutorial, the written tutorial in here. It's not created by me, it's created by different people, but it's actually very, very useful, and it was very useful for making this video. But yeah, it does contain a lot of information, so be sure to check it out before trying to do anything with Future Restore, since a wrong command or a wrong file would definitely destroy the entire restore and you only have one shot at doing this. So be very, very careful. All right. So as you can see, the device has been restored. I'm now on the setup screen. I'm just finishing the, uh, the entire setup. And there you go. We're running the iOS 12.1.1, even though iOS 12.1.1 hasn't been signed by Apple for months. So it's very important to have your blobs saved. I'm going to go ahead and here on settings and demonstrate the fact that I do run iOS 12.1.1. 
So um, as you can see, if I go here to the update, it tries to download 12.2. So make sure you block the updates. And then of course, if I go here on the about, as you can see, 12.1.1, 16C50. So that's basically the device running that. Don't forget, you shouldn't set a passcode or touch ID when you restore the device, of course, because the Fortnite bug would definitely make your device reboot continuously after two weeks. Once that bug is fixed, I'm going to let you know here on the channel and you're going to have to restore again in order to have that fixed. But until then, do not set a passcode or touch ID. So yeah, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to stay updated. I'm GS Now. Until the next time, peace out.